So welcome back to the Astroform channel and thanks for tuning in. In this particular video we're going to discuss why I actually bought a Celestron Edge HD telescope for my astrophotography hobby and I will show you some first light pictures of the moon and the planet. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So I divided this video up into three parts. In the first part I just quickly wanted to explain what kind of telescope I was looking for in the first place. Uh, then we will move on to unboxing the Edge HD and I will get into some of the main advantages that the Edge HD has in my opinion uh, over other uh, telescopes that are on the astrophotography market today. And then in the third part of the video I just wanted to show you some first light pictures taken with the Edge HD. Uh, keep in mind uh, the astronomical seeing in the Netherlands is pretty terrible at the moment but I was able to take some pictures of the moon and the planets in between the clouds so I will show you what that looked like. So hi folks let me just quickly explain why I was looking for a new telescope and I think you can summarize it by saying that I was suffering from what is called aperture fever. I was looking for a telescope with a little bit of a longer focal length and a bigger aperture as compared to some of the wide field refractors I already own and already engage in astrophotography with. And the main reason of course to want a longer focal length and a bigger aperture is that you can of course then zoom in on smaller deep sky objects that are out there in the night sky, some smaller galaxies but also for instance the planets in our own solar system them. And yeah, always when I'm looking for a telescope, I'm looking for a telescope that is relatively easy to maintain, relatively easy to carry around and set up, and also relatively easy to store. I live in a very small uh, house in the center of Utrecht, a big city in the Netherlands, so I don't have a lot of storage space, so it's always nice to have a compact, lightweight telescope. Question of the day, what kind of telescope are you using for deep sky astrophotography and or planetary imaging. Let me know in the comment section down below so we can get into a conversation. So what kind of telescope are you using for planetary and or deep sky astrophotography? Let me know. So let's unbox this telescope. Here we go. So let's just check what came in the box. So basic one and a quarter inch star di diagonal. So this is actually, I think, an extra mount for the finer scope that comes with the Celestron Edge HD. Here we have the... Uh, ah, it's getting uh, worse, the weather. But here we have uh, the finer scope itself, so you can, I think, mount it on this mount. And this mount can be put on the Celestron uh, Edge HD. So, um, yeah. 
I'm going to put everything together. So hi guys, I hope you enjoy this video. If you do, please consider giving this video a thumbs up. And please consider subscribing to the channel when you are into astrophotography. So let's get into some of the specific reasons uh, why I bought the Celestron Edge HD. And the first advantage of the Edge HD is that I think it will make a very good astrophotography telescope. And the main reason for that is uh, it is able to produce aberration free images and it has a flat focal plane all the way uh, to the edge of your field of view. Um, and what does that actually mean? So, yeah, when we compare the Edge HD design to, for instance, a Smith Cassegrain telescope, or a normal Smith Cassegrain telescope, the normal SCT it suffers from field curvature and also off axis coma. And what that actually means in practice is that when you're going to image a deep sky objects or a, a, a star field, then the stars on the edge of your field of view, they will be out of focus and they will be elongated. Uh, and you don't want that. You want pinpoint, sharp, accurate stars across your entire field of view. And actually Edge HD, it comes with uh, extra mirror based system that is able to correct actually for this field curvature and off axis coma, producing these sharp pinpoint stars that you want to image. So what I also like about the Edge HD is that with a little bit of extra gear, you can turn this telescope into a multi-purpose telescope. So let me just explain what I mean by that. So first of all, in terms of planetary imaging, the Edge HD has a native focal length of 2000 millimeters. Well, when you compare that with a two times or a three times Barlow, you will get to 4000 or 6000 millimeters of focal length. And that really allows you to zoom in on the planets and also capture some of the surface details of Jupiter, for instance, or Mars. So um, yeah, you can use it for planetary imaging when you combine it with a Barlow lens. So second of all, when you're interested in imaging smaller deep sky objects, the smaller galaxies, smaller nebulae, you can actually uh, buy a Celestron 0.7 reducer specifically made for the Edge HD system. And that will turn your telescope into an F7 ratio telescope. So fast enough to capture a little bit of the dimmer nebulae, small nebulae that are out there. Uh, while still maintaining a long focal length. So your focal length will drop to about 1400 millimeters, but then still, still this focal length is a lot longer as compared to uh, some of the APO refractors, some of the lens-based telescopes that are on the market today uh, with, uh, in a similar price range, basically. And then third of all, you can actually turn this Edge HD telescope into a super fast wide field uh, telescope for astrophotography. So you can buy, it's not cheap, but you can buy a hyperstar system, which will turn your Edge HD into an F2 ratio telescope with a focal length of about 400 millimeters. So that's comparable to, let's say a 70 or an 80 millimeter APO refractor. You will get a similar field of view, uh, but at the same time, you will be imaging at F2. So that's a super fast ratio and actually comparable to some of the fastest telescopes that are out there, the RESA telescopes. So another thing I really like is that the Edge HD comes with a spherical secondary mirror, which should make it easier to collimate this telescope. I spent the entire summer trying to collimate my classical Cassegrain telescope, and this is a Richie Crenchet design, uh, meaning that it has a parabolic secondary mirror, which makes it a lot harder, a lot more complex to collimate these types of telescopes. So I really, really hope that the Edge HD is much easier to collimate and I already saw that um, it doesn't require collimation right out of the box so I'm pretty happy with that already. So the final thing I really like about the Edge HD is that it is a compact and lightweight uh, telescope. So at about six kilograms, it's pretty easy to carry this telescope outside and also set it up on your mount. And uh, yeah, the, the, the tube length is about 431 millimeters. So that makes it very easy to store it somewhere in your house when you don't have a lot of storage space. Uh, when you compare this to Newtonians or Dobsonian telescopes, of course, they often are bulkier, heavier, and they have a longer, uh, tube length and that makes it a little bit harder to store for somebody who lives in the city. So a quick update for my regular viewers. You probably saw me playing around with my classical Cassegrain F12 during the summer. Uh, but unfortunately, I spent, I think, about five nights trying to collimate this telescope. But no matter what I did, 
I couldn't get this uh, telescope completely collimated. So uh, it, it was very frustrating actually, and I ended up uh, sending this telescope back to Telescope Service, a German-based company, um, and they uh, were really, really good. They, they took it back and I uh, changed actually this telescope for the Edge HD. So uh, I just want to be transparent and uh, let you know what happened. So let's move on to the next part. So hi folks, I'm pretty excited because this is going to be the first test with my Celestron Edge HD. So I mounted it on my Skywatcher EQ6R Pro and I also put the finest scope on the telescope and also my guide scope and the ASI 1600 Mono Pro imaging camera. So let me show you what that looks like from the back. So let me just quickly show you what I did here. So I have mounted the finder scope. Uh, it was actually pretty easy to do. There's a, a bracket and you can just unscrew the two left screws on the Celestron Edge HD. You can put the bracket in place and then you can put the finder scope on that bracket. Uh, very easy to do and I have an extra shoe here for my guide scope. And as you can see, I have mounted the ASI 1600 Mono Pro via the native Smith Cassegrain uh, adapter here to the Edge HD. The ASI 1600 Mono Pro is currently just connected via the native SCT adapter that came with the Celestron Edge HD. But in order for me to also mount my filter wheel and the camera, I need uh, an SCT to 2 inch adapter actually. So I ordered that and hopefully I, it will arrive in a couple of days. But in the meanwhile, I just wanted to show you uh, what 2000 uh, meters of focal length, what that means actually. So um, I'm currently aimed at the, uh, at the tree about, I would say five, 600 meters away. Um, let me show you with the camera. So the first test is a daytime test. I'm just focused on the tree you can see over there. And let me zoom out a little bit. So you can see I have the, yeah, the 1600 Mono Pro uh, just at the native uh, 2000 millimeter focal length. And let me just show you what it looks like. So here we are looking at the full resolution image of the tree. So um, yeah, again, with the ASI 1600 Mono Pro currently at the maximum resolution of uh, 4656 by 2640. Um, and in mono 16 uh, mode here. So my frames per second are pretty awful. Um, also because I run a pretty long USB cable to a mobile PC in my shed. So I have to resolve uh, that. But uh, yeah, for now I'm pretty happy. I can see the individual leaves uh, at 500 meters away. The individual branches of the tree. Uh, look, they look pretty, um, yeah, pretty sharp to me. And uh, maybe I can focus a little bit better. But uh, yeah, I'm really excited. So... If we go down to 920 by 1080p, um, here you can really see the individual branches. Is this the maximum I get? Yeah, this is. Um, so yeah, you can you can see the individual branches, the individual leaves, and they are pretty sharp. So uh, I'm hopeful <laughs> that uh, tonight I am able to image or to, to, to look at something. Um, I cannot connect my filter wheel, um, so it will not be a deep sky target. Um, I'm actually thinking about just focusing on Mars. Let's see if I can find Mars in the night sky. And yeah, of course, Mars pretty small. It's already November, so we are at past opposition already. But uh, I think that's a good first try for the Edge HD. And also, uh, yeah, just trying out uh, my skills in finding planets again. So hope to be back tonight. Uh, stay tuned. Mm -hmm.